Virtual Big Shot Camp 2020. I'm Missy Thornburg. I'm Charles Thornburg. And we are so glad that you are joining us this week for Big Shot Camp. This is not exactly what we had in mind. Um, we would like to be on the campground, but that didn't work out this way. Instead, we are bringing camp to your home. So you have this unique opportunity to share with your family and friends a little bit about what we do at CHH in the summers. So join us on the Camp Hickory Hills Facebook page, the YouTube channel, or the Instagram account. Um, there's a Greek Squad video that explains a little bit about that. And join with us as we learn about Jesus, who is the game changer this week. Uh, that is our theme, the game changer. And we hope that you will see that whatever you're going through, Jesus is the game changer. Our scripture for this week comes from Ephesians the third chapter and the 20th verse. And it is now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You know, in a lot of video games, there are these super overpowered characters. And when I think about Jesus, he is totally overpowered over the enemy. And he is all that you need and we just want to encourage you this week as we go through uh, these virtual um, sessions that you would remember that Jesus is truly the game changer. When he comes in, the enemy has to flee. So welcome, worship with us tonight as we lift up the name of Jesus, the game changer. God bless. All right, everybody, wherever you're at, living rooms, in your homes, even if you want to go outside. You have a computer that you can take outside and you want to watch this there. I want you to get up. I want you to spread out. And I want you to sing with us as loud as you can. This song is called New Name Written Down in Glory. Thank you. 
on the throne, Lord. And we give you all the blessing and honor in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now, Sister Caitlin is going to come and bring us the word. So you can get comfortable wherever you're at. And we will soon come. Hello, everyone. My name is Caitlin. Um, I was going to be your evangelist at camp this year. And even though, like we've said, we're not on the campground, um, I'm still your evangelist this week. So um, before I start, I want to open with prayer. So wherever you are, um, make sure you're listening and all of that. And right now I'm going to close our eyes and we're going to pray. All right, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, I pray that you will touch tonight. Lord, you are already working in this service, and I pray that you will continue. God, I pray that your word would be spoken. I pray that you will guide and um, just do what you want to do. Have your way in this place. God, I pray that the kids and the adults watching right now would just hear your voice, and they would learn what they need to learn through this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. It is awesome to be here tonight. And I hope you guys have fun, and I hope you guys learn something. So, let's see here. I like to start with games, because games are a whole lot of fun. But I need someone to help me. All right, so my friend is about to come out, and if you were at Big Shot last year, you might remember him. All right, Mr. Cluckers, come on out. All right, everybody say hi, Mr. Cluckers. Hi, Mr. Cluckers. Hello, kids. Okay, Mr. Cluggers, why don't you help me with tonight's game? All right, what are we doing? We are going to give them some hints, and I need my little notes here so that I remember all the hints for y'all. Um, we're going to give them some hints about a video game character, and their job is to guess the video game character. And if you are in a place where you can scream it as loud as you can, then do that. But if you're in a place where you'll get trouble, Here's your challenge. You are going to whisper it as quietly as you possibly can. All right? Yes. So if you can do it loud, do it loud. But if you'll get in trouble, just be Like this. Maybe not that loud. All right? All right. Okay. All right. So I'll start with the first one. Okay. And then you can do some Mr. Clarkers. How about that? Okay. All right. So this video game character is very famous. He likes to go up pipes, and he likes the color of red. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Well, hang on, Mr. Cruz. we got to give the kids a chance to think about it. Okay? So be patient, all right? Okay. Now, think about it. He likes red. He likes to go up pipes. Hmm. All right, Mr. Cluggers, go ahead and say it. Uh, is it Mario? It is. It's Mario. So if you say Mario, you would be correct. What do I win? Think about if you got it right. What do I win? Nothing. Oh. You, you, oh, no, I know. You get to do the next question. Yay! All right, go ahead. Let's see. Uh, this video game character is pretty active. He likes to stay fit. He has his own movie, and he likes chili dogs. I tried a chili dog once. I didn't like it. Oh, I love chili dogs. It's too spicy and too much cheese. Oh, gotcha. All right, so he's very fit, very active. He's got his own movie. Pretty recent movie, right? Mm-hmm. All right, let's see if you can think. Let's do a drum roll. Okay. Sorry, I don't have to do a drum roll. That's <laughs> okay. All right, and this video game character would be... Mr. Clucker, who is it? Sonic! Sonic! We have him right here. All right, I Sonic. Do. <laughs> so, if you got that right, you said Sonic. Give yourself, or take a bell. Excuse me. All right, let's see. I'll do the next one, all right? All right. All right, so this video game character has a lot of different games. I don't even know the names of all of them. There are so many. All right, he has a lot of neat weapons, and he likes the color green. Hmm. And I'll give you another hint. It's not Luigi. Alright? So it's not Luigi. And he likes green. Has a lot of different weapons. And has a bunch of different games. Who could that be? Hmm. Well, I have, a, I have a guess. Yeah. Is it Gumby? Gumby's not a video game character, Mr. Cluckers. 
Oh. All right. Any other guesses? Nope. Okay. I'll say. All right. Ready? It's Link from The Legend of Zelda. So if you said Link, then you would be correct. This time, give yourself a pat on the back if you got it right. Okay. You can't give yourself a pat on the back, can you, Mr. Butler? No, kind of I don't have a hand to pat myself, but... <laughs> All right. Oh, this one I think is going to be a little bit harder. All right. Ooh, I like hard questions. Yeah, let's see if you can guess it, all right? All right. All right, so this video game character, she's one of my favorites. She wears a crown, uh, she likes flowers, and she likes the colors orange and yellow. Mm -hmm. Any guesses? Think about it. Who could that be? You know? Jess is here with us tonight. Jessa, who do you think it is? Daisy. It's Daisy! Good Yay. job! Give yourself a pat on the back if you got it right. Did you get it right, Mr. Cluckers? Uh, what was the question? Uh, you were supposed to guess who the character was. Oh. Uh, sorry, I missed that one, I guess. All right. Okay. Well, let's go to the next one. Okay. I want to I guess this one. You want to guess this one? Okay. Yes. All right. This video game character eats a lot. Right? Mm, I like that. He's been around a long, long, long time. Right, and you can find his game at most arcades. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, okay. I know. Okay. okay, well, let's wait just a second. Think okay. at home. Who could it be? Think about it. All right, Mr. Clippers. Okay, is it Kirby? No. What? Kirby doesn't have, I've never seen a video game uh, arcade thing of Kirby. Have you? No. Okay. Any you give me a hint. Hmm. Oh, we have him on our stage here tonight. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah? Is it Clyde? The orange ghost? No. Okay, is it uh, Inky? The blue one? No. Uh, Blinky? No, not the red one. Uh, Pinky? Nope, not the pink one. I give up. Seriously? Yeah. You don't want to get anybody else on the stage? Nope. You sure? Yes. Okay. Well, he's literally right above your head, and it would be Pac-Man! Oh, man. So if you said Pac-Man, congratulations, you got it right. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mr. Cluckers, for helping me with well, You're so team. welcome. All right, everybody say bye, Mr. Cluckers. Bye. Bye, bye Mr. Cluckers. All right. So, like I said, I like to start out with a game, because games are just fun, and they get us in an exciting mood. All right, so tonight we're about to get into our scriptures for the night, okay? And tonight's story is really cool. I really like this story. And um, it's really cool because this is called a parable. And a parable was a story that has a special meaning to it. So Jesus actually told this story. And if you have your Bibles, go ahead and get them out if you have them. And you can read along with me. Now, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. So if you don't have that, that's okay. It might sound a little different, but it means the same thing. Okay? So we're going to be turning to Luke 16. Um, let me make sure. Okay. Uh, no, not 16. Sorry. Luke 15, uh, starting at verse 11. All right. So 15, verse 11. So if y'all will be turning there. Um, like I said, this is a story that Jesus told, and um, he had a special meaning behind it uh, that makes it very important. Um, so in your Bible, if you have some red letters, that means Jesus said it, all right? Okay, so verse 11, we're going to start there. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. So his son went to his father and he said, I want my money, which his inheritance, which is the money that they would get. And a lot of people nowadays get when their parents die. So he said, I don't want to wait until you're dead. I want my money now. So his father gave it to him. So just a few days after that, the son left and decided to go party and spend his money in 
awful ways and just party. He had a bunch of friends and all of that. Um, and he just he spent a lot of money. All right, and so then verse 14. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So the famine came, and they, the crops weren't growing right, so the food wasn't growing right, and it probably wasn't raining, and animals were dying, and so they needed food. And because he spent all of his money, he no longer had money for food in a time where he needed it desperately. So he decided, in verse 15, so he went and hired himself out, he got a job, uh, to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. All right, let me just tell you, the pigs, touching the pigs was a no-no. You did not touch the pigs if you were a Jew, and Jesus was telling the story of the Jews. So this was like a big deal. Um, pigs, they were considered unclean. Uh, the Jews didn't touch them, and if you touched them, you had to go through this crazy whole process to get yourself clean. You couldn't go in the temple and that kind of thing. So this was the lowest of the low. He couldn't have got, gotten a worse, a worse job than that. Okay, verse 16, and he longing to he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. He was so hungry, he wanted the food that the pigs had. Now, if you've ever seen what pigs eat, it's pretty nasty. I would show you a picture, but I'd rather you not throw up, so I'm not going to. But they ate rotten, nasty, moldy food, just the leftovers. And he was so hungry, he wanted to eat that nasty food. So he was very hungry. But then he came to his senses. It says, but when he came to himself, came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. So he decided, I'm going to go, and I'm going to say, I'll just be your servant. I'm not worthy to be your son, but I will be your servant. So we're going to skip on down to verse 20. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, and he uh, felt compassion and embraced him and kissed him. So his father was waiting for him. Even though he was a long way off, his father saw him and started running and hugged him and just loved on him. So his, the son said to his father what he was going to say, that I'm not worthy to be your son, but I'll be your servant. Please just let me be your servant. I'm not worthy to have that title and that blessing, but just let me be a servant. But his father ignored him, and he said to his servants, he said, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and he began. they began to celebrate. So his father didn't care. Even though the son had gone and done awful things, he still loved his son so much. He said, it doesn't matter. Let's have a party because you are home. He was just so excited. So like I said, this story has a very special meaning. And you might be wondering what that is. So the father represents God. God made us. He's our father. He made us together. When you were in your mother's belly, he formed you. He has a plan for you. He is your father. So then the younger son represents us. God made us, oh, he loves us, he's our father, and we're his son or daughter. Um, when the son asks for his inheritance, that's like when we go our own way, when we sin. So sin is anything that goes against God, right? So it might be lying, disobeying your parents, things like that, anything like that. But here's the thing, we are born with sin, okay? <clears throat> so this represents us, all right? Now see, it looks clean, but when we're born, we're born with that sin, all right? But then we do other bad things. We, except we 
disobey our parents. We might lie to get out of trouble. We might be rude to someone, say something we shouldn't. Um, we might steal something, all those kind of things. And so see, it's getting so dirty and messed up. And you might say, well, I'll try to get it out. Let me try to just get this out. But you can't. We can't get it out. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But see, here's the thing. <clears throat> we don't have to live like this. This is not the end of the story. You know, this is dirty, nasty, and um, this is how we look on the inside. But that's not the end. See, God made a way because he loves us so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So Jesus sent his son Jesus, or God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. He died an awful and painful death for us so that we wouldn't have to. But here's the thing. Jesus died for us and he paid the sacrifice because we deserve to die. But he made a way. But that's, we can't just be clean just because Jesus died for us. We have to do something. First um, John 1 and 9 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> and then Romans 10 and 9, because if you confess with your heart that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay, so when we do those things, we ask Jesus into our heart. All right, and so he comes in. And he cleans us. So you might wonder, how, how do we do that? You know, we kind of talked about it, but it might be a little complicated. Let's see. We admit we're a sinner. God, I'm a sinner. I am dirty, and I am not worthy. So we admit we're a sinner. God, I'm a sinner. We believe he died for us. When you believe that Jesus died for you, you say, God, I believe in you. I believe you are the one and only God, and I believe you came and died for me. Then we confess our sins. Lord, forgive me, clean me, make me whole. And that's when he cleans us. And there is no longer that sin in our heart when he cleans us. So... Tonight, I'm going to give you an opportunity to be clean. It's no fun being dirty. It's no fun being sinful. A lot of times sin seems fun, but it doesn't last. And it brings hurt and sorrow. So we need Jesus to come in and be our best friend. And like I said... All you have to do is admit you're a sinner, believe he died for you, and confess your sins, and he cleans you. He loves you so, so much. <clears throat> so much that he died for you. And he wants you to be his child. He wants you to be his. So where you are, in your home, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make an altar. We can't be at camp. We can't gather around the altars right now. We can't be at church, or some people can't be at church and come to the altars. But God doesn't only work in those places. You don't have to get saved in a church or in a campground or a church function. You can get saved right where you are. You might be in your car. You might be in your bedroom. You might be in the living room. You might be in your kitchen. Wherever you are, you can ask Jesus into your heart. Back in Bible times, when they wanted to talk to God and they wanted to offer sacrifice to him, they built an altar where they were when there wasn't a temple. They built an altar. Now I don't expect you to go get stones or bricks or wood and make an altar. But if that altar is at your bed, and you want to kneel beside your bed, or if you want to kneel beside your couch, or just where you are, make that your altar. <clears throat> and I encourage you, if you're with your family, get together as a family and 
kneel at your couch or wherever you are. All right, so make your altar. Wherever that is, make your altar. And I'm gonna lead you in a sinner's prayer. All you have to do is repeat after me and believe it and mean it. And if you do that, then you're his. And you are saved. And God, like in the story, he's gonna have a party up in heaven for you. All right, bow your heads and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. God, I believe you came and you died for me. I want to be yours and I want to be clean. So Lord, forgive me. Make me clean and make me yours. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Continue to pray. I'm going to sing. Worship, pray some more, pray for your needs, whatever it is. Do that at your altar. Oh, we know. 